Hi there, it's Bonnie with So Inspired by Bonnie with another Tuesday's Tip. And today what we're gonna talk about are cool stars with the rolled hem foot. It's also known as the narrow hemming foot. Now I know a lot of you have struggled with this. I know I struggled with this years ago when I first started playing around with it. <clears throat> but once you know a couple of tricks, it's not so bad. I will say it's not the easiest foot to master, but it's doable and you can master it. So I'm gonna go over here, refresh my uh, Facebook page and make sure that everybody's able to hear me and see me and that sort of thing. So if you don't mind, go ahead and give us a shout out. Let us know where you're coming in from, uh, wherever you are in the country or world for that matter. Let us know that you're there. Please give us a like or share the page because the more the merrier and uh it's just a lot more fun when you you have more people that you can share uh your ideas and thoughts and tips and tricks so i see leslie and joanne and deanne and well there's a lot of people showing up <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started again we're going to discuss the cool start with the rolled hem foot Guess what we should start with is what does the rolled hem foot look like? Now, today I'm gonna to be sewing with no lights on my machine, so have pity on me because when I tested this a little bit earlier and tried with lighting on my machine, there was so much glare you weren't gonna be able to see. So I figured it was best if I couldn't see and you could. So hopefully this will work out okay because <laughs> I can't see very well as it is with light. But anyway, so, what the uh, rolled hem foot looks like, or the narrow hemmer, it comes with a lot of machines. Let me get my fingers out of the way. Uh, it comes with a lot of machines standard. Uh, some of the machines, it does not come standard, so you might have to uh, buy it aftermarket. Um, not aftermarket, but after you buy your machine. And one of the things it has is it has this little groove. You'll see a little roll there, but before the roll, you'll see this little groove, and I'm working backwards, so it's kind of hard for me to see, but you'll see a little groove in the foot right before it goes to the roll. And you want your raw edge of the fabric to line up with that edge of the groove. Now, there's a couple of different sizes of the rolled hem foot. Uh, I think one is, this one looks to me to be about a 1 8 inch rolled hem. I think they make one about 3 8 of an inch or so, maybe a quarter inch. Um, but they're not too different. They're still pretty narrow. Um, but that's what a rolled hem foot looks like. I'm going to go ahead and attach this onto the machine. And I will rotate you guys so that rotate you guys it sounds like I'm gonna be able to actually <laughs> pick you guys up and move you I'm gonna rotate my phone <laughs> so that you can actually see the bed of the foot and so I'll be out of view here for a while but you'll be able to see the foot or the the bed of the machine and that's the important part so I'm gonna move this I'm sorry that I'm swerving you around all over the place I want to make sure things don't fall off and I'm gonna look over here. It looks like you can see the bed of the machine pretty good. And we'll go ahead and get started. So what I have here are um, two pieces of fabric and I do recommend that you test first and play around with this first before you actually try it on a project. Maybe cut yourself a 12 inch square or something of that nature so you have something to start with. I used two samples to play around with. I did one that I did not starch. I did iron it flat, but I did not starch it. And then the other piece of fabric, I did starch it. When I tested it, I seemed to have better luck with the piece of fabric that I starched. But try both ways and see which way works the best for you. Something else that I wanted to mention, I found this little you know, the type of fabric matters when you're trying to do a rolled hem. A rolled hem is very tight and narrow, so you don't want to have a big bulky fabric that you're trying to put into a teeny tiny rolled hem. It's just not going to work well. 
I found this uh, fake leather. I don't think it would roll real well for a, a tiny rolled ham, but again, give it a test and see what you think. But um, this one's pretty pliable, so you might be able to get away with it, but bear that in mind. You don't want to use heavy, thick fabrics to try to roll ham. This is not something for toweling. <laughs> So what I have here are thin cottons. Um, again, I start, I kind of preferred the one that had been starched, so that's what I'm going to try. When you start your rolled hem, don't try to just start with it nice and flat. It's not going to work as well. Take it while it's still completely out of the, the machine, or the bed or the foot, and roll it over a little bit. Kind of finger press it and I'm rolling this over about an eighth of an inch and then roll it over a second time about an eighth of an inch and then press it so I've got a little double roll here at the very end of my fabric can you see that so I've rolled it over again I'll open this up so you can see better I've rolled it over a little bit pinched it shut kind of finger pressed it rolled it over a second time pinched it shut okay so I've kind of finger pressed it and again my light is off so I'm kind of flying blind here and then the next thing I want to give as a hint is you're going to be in the center needle position with a straight stitch and uh, you want to start a little bit away from the very edge do not start off your fabric you want to start on the fabric maybe an eighth of an inch in or so. You want to start a little bit off, away I should say, from the ed, the raw edge of that fabric. And then you're going to put your needle down. You're going to raise the presser foot up and then you're going to take the fabric and you're going to wiggle and jiggle it. Those are technical terms. <laughs> wiggle and jiggle it until you kind of get the fabric to sort of roll into the foot. Again, you want the raw edge of the fabric to align to the left edge of that little groove. Okay. And you can kind of keep playing with it until you have it in. You've got, you've got it folded over at the very beginning. You've got the needle holding it in place so it's not gonna go anywhere. And then you're gonna just start sewing. This is not a race. Um, so you're gonna just start sewing at a nice, easy pace. And you'll notice I'm not holding the fabric way flat. I'm letting the fabric rise up a little bit and I'm guiding the raw edge to be against the edge of that groove. So I'm holding it up a little bit and just a hair to the left, not much. And I'm using contrasting threads, so it'll definitely show up if I had some issues flying here blind with no light. <laughs> and again, you're, I'm just gently holding on to this, holding it up just a little bit. I'm not holding it real high or holding it down flat. And hopefully, I've got my hands out of the way so that you can see. And then you just let it take it on in. Cut your thread. Raise this up and oh my goodness, look at that. I did pretty darn good for flying blind. So I hope you can see that. It just rolled it in really nice and even. Now, um, I've already had a brain fart. I can't remember if I mentioned this or not. I don't think I did. I recommend that you do the rolled hem on straight edges, not around curves um, or a bias. Trying to do a rolled hem around a circular skirt, this would not be the best method to use for that. That's for another day. But uh, for straight edges, this works fantastic. You see how nice and even that is? Can you see how you don't have a bunch of puckering? You don't have things popping out? 
Again, I did starch this fabric a little bit. I have, I kind of liked having the fabric starched. That seemed to work best for me. So I'm gonna come back over here where you can see me. Raise this up. <laughs> Turn this back. So we're back in view here a little bit. All right, and what I remembered right before doing this segment for you guys is that I had made a dress for my oldest daughter. Oh gosh, it's going on 30 years ago. So this little dress, do you remember those uh, Daisy Kingdom dresses from way back when? Um, I made my girls some of these and they just loved them. They loved the big skirts. They loved, you know, twirling in them and all that kind of stuff. But they had big sashes on the back and the big bows. I mean, in Texas, everything, <laughs> everything's big. <laughs> but uh, you can see I used the rolled hem. Uh, let me see if I can get this up here on that sashing. So, and there was lots of sashing on the back of this. This is probably a good four feet long on each side. And you know, you have both sides, you have two sashes. And then on the very end, they finished it off square. You know, I did the rolled hem on the end and finished it off square. And then what I did, it's stitched down so I can't unstitch it. Well, I could unstitch it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> this was flat and then we just turned it in a triangle and then I just top stitched on top of the previous stitching to hold it down in place. If you can see that. So there's a little bit of top stitching there, but um, the rolled hem works great for things like this, where you have straight, straight edges that you just really want a nice little finish on it. Again, it's not a race. You don't have to do it really super fast, but you saw that it didn't take me very long to get, you know, 12 inches. It wasn't that big of a deal. Just remember a couple of things. Remember to fold that fabric over when you start before you even go near the foot. Get it underneath the foot. Start just a tad away from the, the raw edge. Don't start right on the raw edge because you might risk knotting up at the edge. So you wanna have that those feed dogs on the fabric. Get the needle down, then wiggle and jiggle that fabric up around that rolled hem portion of the rolled hem foot. Then you can lower the foot and take off. Again, at a nice easy pace. So that's all there is to it. Try it, cut yourself. I would suggest maybe a 12 inch square or so, maybe just, you know, I just took a couple of scraps I had, uh, even, you know, took a rotary cutter so I had a nice smooth edge on it and then ironed them, starched it and practiced a little bit on that. And you'll be a pro in no time. Not the super easiest intuitive foot to use, but once you know a couple of little tricks, it really isn't hard. You can master this foot. Okay, I'm gonna look at my little cheat sheet to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm gonna go over here, move the machine out of the way, and bring my computer on over. And we're gonna see if we have any questions. Now again, sometimes, these questions on Facebook, they roll away before I have a chance to actually see the question. But rest assured, I will get them answered as, as quickly and as, uh, as I can. So let's go ahead and take a look here and see what we have. And so she hasn't used that foot in years. Well, I think we don't do as much um, garment sewing as we used to do. That might be part of it. Uh, I know I'm guilty of that, but it really comes in handy. When you need it, you need it. I mean, I my mom used to do all of that rolled hemming by hand. She never did rolled hems on the machine and she did all of it by hand. And so I'm just so thankful that we have a means to do this sort of work without doing it by hand. <laughs> um, would you recommend for minky material? No, I would not. I would not recommend this foot for really super stretchy material um, because, you know, minky, one th for one thing, is kind of thick. It's not, it's got a nap to it. It's not, you know, like a thin cotton works great. 
Um, I think a silk would work really well. You know, some of your more natural fibers work really well, but some of the slinky, slip, slippery thing, I, I don't think that would work real well. You would need, also with Minky, you'd need a stretch, stretch stitch to use with it, which means it would be probably going back and forth or side to side. And for the rolled hem foot to work really well, it would work best with a straight stitch that doesn't have forward side sideways motions because then you're kind of fighting it uh, being able to roll really well. Um, let's see if we have any other questions in here. That was a good question though. That's a good question. Let's see. I'm not saying I'm going to refresh the page again just to make sure I don't have any other um, questions. And if you think of a question later, don't hesitate, as I said, to pop in. Leslie says, I get so confused as to what foot does what when I haven't used them for a while. I need to put them in an embroidery, th in an embroidery ca thread case with labels so I, know, so I know I will use them more. That's a really good idea. What I do with my feet to help keep them straight for myself is I have a baby lock case it was four feet, um, but you could use any, just about anything. And I, it has little zipper pockets and it's vinyl see-through, so I can see the foot through the vinyl uh, pockets and they're zipper shut. And then I cut off the, uh, well, I package the instructions with the foot and then I also, uh, you know, the label where it says what it is, I cut that off the, off of the cardboard that the packaging it comes in and I stick that all inside the clear vinyl um, package. I did a Tuesday's tip on that one time as a matter of fact. It, you know, I think it was under organizational ideas, but it helps keep it straight when you have all these different feet and what they do to have the instructions, to have the name of the foot right there. Because if nothing else, if you don't have the instructions, if you have at least the name of the foot, you can uh, go to YouTube and type in that name of the foot and I bet you'd have some ideas pop up as to how to use it so that's a great idea um, you know or issue that a lot of people have we forget what the foot does um, <clears throat> can you show again <clears throat> excuse me Christy Christy's asking can you show again where you line up the fabric on the foot I couldn't tell exactly where you were pointing. <clears throat> Let me see here. See if I can. The foot itself has a groove. Um, a groove that's... Uh, let me see. That's kind of hard to get there. You see, there's the groove. There's a groove right next to the roll. And you'll see the foot kind of goes out at an angle where that groove is. You want to line up the fabric right along the edge of that groove. I hope you can see that, Christy. So you'll just, when it's facing, when the foot is facing you, the raw edge of the fabric will be lined up to the left edge, which is right here the left edge of the groove. Not over here, but the left edge of that groove. Okay, let's see. Sharon's asking, is there a list you provide somewhere of all the Tuesday's tips? Sure would be nice to go back to specific ones. What I have done, that, that's a good question, Sharon. What I have done to try to help organize the Tuesday's tips is on my website, <clears throat> excuse me, at soinspiredbybonnie.com. I have a category called Tuesday's Tips. If you look at that, they're organized by embroidery tips or glitter flex tips or um, sewing tips, maybe notions. They're or organized by type of tip and then underneath we'll have the titles of the tips. So hopefully that will, that will help make it a little bit easier. So I would recommend going to the website itself and they're, they're organized uh, better. Uh, Leslie said, are they still available? If you're talking about the foot, the 
rolled hem foot, they're most definitely still available. You can go to your dealer and uh, ask for a narrow hemming foot or a rolled hem foot, and they will have them for your machine. Uh, like I said, uh, most machines come with them. Some of the higher end machines, for some reason, have stopped coming with them, um, but they're, they still make them and they're still available. If you're asking about the Tuesday's tips, those are most definitely still available too. We have them all, I have them all on my uh, website. I have them on YouTube as well as Pinterest. And uh, they, the replay is always available on Facebook as well. Um, let's see. Leslie said zip bag for the feet. I love the little zip bags for the feet. Christy said it's not related to today's subject, but what is hanging on the front of your upper cabinets? That's a good question. The ones above your iron. Oh, <laughs> those little hoops. <laughs> those are just hoops of fabric just for, they just, uh, I liked to I liked the fabrics. I thought they were kind of pretty, so they're just hooped fabrics that uh, I have. But you're probably thinking of what's inside them. My husband made those for me, and they're like uh, open door, I don't know what to call them, cupboards? Open door cupboards, and there's pegboard on every side. It's all pegboard. So it's like two pegboards deep, but it takes up half the space. And I have my embroidery hoops in there. I have my rotary cutters, rulers, things that I want to get to really quick. So <laughs> if your husband is handy, uh, those are uh, pretty handy to have. <laughs> and he just came up with that idea years ago, and, and that's what they are. Um, let's see. I think, I think that's all the questions that I'm seeing. I don't see any others. So, let's go on here. I have a tip under, under here. Ah! My, my computer's refreshing and I lost you. Um... I think, okay, we have a tip from from one of you. Her name is uh, Sandy Dart from one of our sewing buddies out there. And she has a, oh, wait a minute. No, I, <laughs> okay, this tip is from, Sa I thought there was another question real quick and I got sidetracked. I <laughs> get sidetracked so easy. <laughs> Sandy Dart has sent in her tip and I thought it was pretty clever. She said, I'd like to submit my tip for slippery quilting rulers. I'm always having trouble with my rulers slipping on the material, so I thought that I would try putting some thin strips of non-strip, non-strip, some non-slip shelf liner on the back of the ruler. I used E6000 glue. Well, I love it. The ruler doesn't move anymore. I've attached pictures. I hope you like my tip. Well, I do like your tip. I thought it was really clever. I know there's a lot of aftermarket little um, dots and things that you can purchase to keep your rulers from slipping on fabric, but a lot of us have shelf liner at home, the kind that's kind of a non-skid. And here's a picture of what she did. She just took her ruler, she cut it, um, the, um, I'm getting backwards here again. She cut the shelf liner, oh, I'd say about a quarter inch wide and eight to 10 inches long. And then she just glued it to the back of her rulers. A lot of us have this handy in our house already so we don't have to go out and buy something else for it, uh, for our rulers, I should say. So I thought that was a very clever idea. And um, for Sandy sharing that idea, we're gonna send her I've got quite a little mess going on over here. We're gonna send her five sheets of the Super Sparkly Glitter Flex. Um, here's just a sampling of some of the colors. We have over 60 colors available at So Inspired by Bonnie, so I hope you'll go check those out. Um, so we'll be sending those to her as a thank you for sending in her tip. Please, if you have a favorite tip, send your tips to 
bonnie at soinspiredbybonnie.com. And uh, if we use your tip on the air, we will send you five sheets of uh, Glitter Flex, the six by 10 sheets. So I think we have covered everything for today. I hope you have a safe, uh, safe, safe day today. I, I was thinking of the people in, uh, with, in the path of Florence, actually, when I was thinking of that. I hope that you will keep them in their, your thoughts and prayers um, as the hurricane is coming through. Um, we, we will be thinking of you and our thoughts and prayers are going out for you. I know that they're starting evacuations, so keep them, keep them close to your heart. Um, also, I want to remind you, please sign up for our newsletter over at SoInspiredByBonnie.com. You'll get notifications of when our Tuesday's tips are, sales, uh, special releases, all sorts of fun things, and tips and inspiration. It's just, there's a lot of information in there, so you'll want to do that. Um, I also wanted to let you know that there will not be a Tuesday's tip this coming, um, the next Tuesday, which is September 18th. I will be on the road and I won't be where I'll be able to even have a phone. So <laughs> there won't be a Tuesday's tip next week, but we'll be back the week after that. Um, Anna is saying I have relatives in uh, Virginia, so they are all in my thoughts and prayers. This one could be bad. I, Anna, I agree. I'm, I'm pretty concerned about it myself. Uh, having had a dog, have, I have a daughter on a coast Fortunately, she's not in this one's path, but she's been in Harvey's path and all, you know, enough. So I, I really, my heart goes out to them because I know uh, the devastation these hurricanes can cause. So I think we have gotten another Tuesday's tip under the belt. And I, again, will not be here next Tuesday, but we will be here the following Tuesday. So September 19th, we're not going to be around, but we will be the next Tuesday. Again, sign up for our newsletter over at SoInspiredByBonnie.com, and you'll get all the notifications of when our Tuesday's tips are through that. So, hope you have a great sewing day. Take care, and bye-bye for now.